I've been on a mission to finish making builds which have been requested multiple times. One of these builds was VSM RBMK reactors using uranium fuel rods and this design should be compact. So in this video I have two designs, one using highly enriched uranium 235 which is still kinda experimental, you will see more about it in the video. The other one is rather simple, it uses medium enriched uranium and is much more stable. So there are timestamps in the description and without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Now before we start making this build, I wanna tell you why this design is kinda experimental. This is the highly enriched uranium-235 reactor which has been running for quite some time and the control rods have been pulled out by 81%. Now in another world, I made a similar reactor, exactly the same design, but I pulled out the control rods by 100%. It was just fine. The flux was uh, roughly 6500, 7000, something like that. However, in this world, when I pull out the control rods fully, it just goes boom. So, reassim reactors are kind of weird in that way. However, when the fuel rods have not depleted, then the power you are going to get is roughly 36 mega Hg per second. And with the medium and rich uranium one, you are going to get similar power like 11.66 or 11.88 mega Hg per second. Now the rear sim boilers have been set to true, of course you need that, the column height has been set to 2 and finally you need to disable meltdowns cause we, in this test world I don't really want to make the Atlosama crowd. So yeah, with that said and it is experimental, let's start building the highly enriched uranium reactor. A single moderated rear sim fuel rod surrounded by control rods on all four sides, then four more fuel rods in the corners like this with more control rods. And finally, we placed down the last four moderated fuel rods and we placed down control rods. And in this way, every single fuel rod is surrounded by control rods on all the sides. We close it off with reflectors. However, do remember in Riasim reactors, these reflectors are also a part of the, basically the reactor. It won't close them off. That is why to close off this reactor, you will need something solid like concrete. And here I am using the industrial stripes variant of concrete. So with that done, this is the reactor for highly enriched uranium-235. We are going to place down three turbines. The first one set to super dense steam, second one to dense steam and the third one to normal steam. To get the steam out, we need the rear same steam output which is red in color and the steam pipes are set to super dense steam. And you are going to need a single big cooling tower along with few auxiliary towers if you are short on materials or you can just use two cooling towers and two big cooling towers and that should completely do the trick. So this entire line will be set to low pressure steam. And for those of you who have made reactors multiple times, feel free to skip this entire section. And yeah, that's the low pressure steam line completely set. And then we need to set the line for water. And this is going to go into a buffer tank and that buffer tank will supply the reactor. However, here I will tell you one thing. In the rear sim reactors, you have separate outputs and inputs for water and uh, the steam. As you saw, this green one is the input and the red one is the output. So you can have multiple inputs. So for example, if you want to place down more buffer tanks, you can actually do that. Because if buffer tanks are connected to each other, they have this weird function that flux or water will keep just bouncing between them. However, if you have separate buffer tanks, it can work in rear sim reactors. Now to fill this reactor up, we are going to place down 9 highly enriched uranium-235 rods. And with that done, now let me show you what happens when I pull out the rods by 81. So the rods have been pulled out by a factor of 81. I am going to start this reactor using RA-226, the radium-226 beryllium rod. And it will melt down. So temperature is going to go up. The flux as soon as it hits over 5000 here we will reach 2400 degrees celsius and that will result in a meltdown so there we go the central rod the reactor would have went boom if our game rule was not set to disable meltdown now with 75 i was able to basically stabilize this reactor the other reactor that i showed you in the starting of this video i had set it to 81 from the beginning it was working just fine i didn't really need to change it which is why i said we are same reactors are weird in that way or i'm making some mistake here anyways with this reactor running we are producing roughly 36 mega he per second so we are pulling roughly 4 million he from every single fuel rod that we have 
So it's not the most inefficient reactor that you can make. And after monitoring it for some time, you can even pull the AZ5. However, this reactor will not shut down completely the first time you press the AZ5 button. The temperature will come down rapidly, but then it will get stuck at 600 and the rods will keep on running continuously. And passively, this will keep on producing power, which is roughly 11.7 MHz per second. So AZ5 doesn't work on the first try. However, if you do remove the control rods, no, not the control rods, sorry, the fuel rods, and then place them inside again, then yeah, then the reactor will shut down completely. And you will need to start it again, which is something I will show you again. However, to make the medium and rich uranium reactor, it is pretty simple. A 5x5 five five assembly of moderated fuel rods, and this has been surrounded by reflectors on all the sides. And that's it. That's the medium and rich uranium reactor. No control rods, no complications, anything like that. We simply need to supply water from one side, get steam out from the other side, and place down 25 of the medium and rich uranium fuel rods inside this reactor. And with that done, this doesn't really need any control panel. However, if you want to monitor the reactor that way, you can actually have it. Now, this one is pretty stable as you can see from the flux graph on the left hand side of the control panel. And it will give you 11.66 to 11.88 mega G per second. And uh, yeah, this doesn't really require multiple buffer tanks. However, for the highly enriched uranium one, I will still recommend you that try using multiple buffer tanks and make sure to have a separate connection for them don't connect the buffer tanks with each other that is the only point i'm trying to make here and yeah as i told you after pulling the fuel rods out placing them in doesn't automatically start the reactor for the highly enriched uranium one you need to manually start it again however with 75 or 77 percent of the control rods pulled out it was stable kind of well and it was running at a decent rate without overheating. The buffer tank was also holding up well. I did let this run for quite some time. However, with the other reactor that I'm going to show you, the one from the starting, uh, it is stable. It doesn't really go boom. Because if it would have, then the reactor would have shut down. So yeah, that is why I said this is kind of experimental, but it is still pretty powerful and works well. I guess if you want to make it run even more safely, then you can pull out the control rods by let's say 70% or 65% and that will ensure that the temperature is way below the meltdown temperature. And this one, the reactor from the beginning, as you can see, 85% depletion on all of the fuel rods. However, the medium and rich uranium one, it is pretty slow. It will run for a long, long time and will give you continuous amounts of power while doing that. So yeah, these were the two reactors that I wanted to showcase in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You learned something from it if someone is new to this entire mod. If you did, do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this entire build. I will see you guys the next time. Until then, peace out and stay safe my dudes.